Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sal, and thank you to Professor Tawanda and everyone else around here. I'm very honored to be here, and I'm not only speaking for myself, so when you see me, see uh, one point something billion young people behind me as well. So I just wanted to begin by um, the comment that Professor Tawanda said about rising. For me, I feel like uh, the rise that I'm seeing right now is one of a vibrant young generation across the continent. So that rise is very profound and it's a rise that we cannot really ignore at this point. We've been talking a lot about numbers in the past few days in the strategy meeting. We've spoken about 60% of young people in Sub-Saharan Africa being you know, under 25. By 2030, 42% of that will, you know, will be, the global population will be young people. So I. For now, I feel like we need to take a bit of a step back and look more at the social side of, of the strategy, or rather the social side of whatever is happening right now. Um, as young people, um, I had this whole, you know, I was thinking about how we are talking about young people, how we're talking about, you know, we're always thinking about a, a group of young people somewhere outside the room. But then today, I want to be very, very specific with using the term we and I, because we are no longer talking about a future of, you know, future leaders. We're talking about young people who are the architects of change right now. They are the change agents. We do not want to be seen as victims. We do not want to be necessarily spoken for in that extent, but we want to also um, have our voices heard um, yeah, in, the, in that extent. So I just want to bring about a term that I think resonates a lot with what we we're speaking, uh, I mean, we've been speaking about a lot of the work we are doing, and that's transgenerationality. So having all these different, you know, generations in one room, I was thinking that, you know, we always think that we learn something new from the young people. We learn, you know, a lot of, we learn a lot of other things from the older generation. But I want to ask to look at it like we are learning from each other. It does not really matter, you know, what new thing the young people bring. Um, an older generation can also bring new ideas. They can also understand the context and feed into that. And younger people can also have, you know, a lot of um, other aspects uh, that they can bring in from an older generation as well. So um, when I was asked to speak today, I just uh, looked at the topic and just thinking about how we can bridge the gap as civil societies, as think tanks uh, for the young people or together with the young people. And uh, the first thing that came into my mind was, uh, yes, the youth panel that I'll be leading is all about you know, participatory action research, which is a great stepping point because the young people are not seen as people who are being spoken to. They're seen as part of the team. You know, we're being seen as people who are also working hand in hand to ensure that this change is made. The other aspect I'd like to speak about is most, mostly just outside the project and programs that are running. Um, as we are in this room today, there are so many young people I'm seeing here. There are so many young people I've, I'm seeing in the organization as well. And um, just looking at that aspect of bringing these young people in not only as a project, you know, names that have um, ideas that we want to speak about now. And the most recent project that I led before coming to Trust uh, Africa was called the Billy Now Now Project. I just want to dis dissect that a bit as to why we spoke about, you know, Billy and the two words now now as a sense of urgency. So Billy stands for 1.2 million young uh, people at 1.2 billion young people at that point, and then now now is the sense of urgency of now. So it just brings me back to the point of. We are the architects of our present. We are also influencing the future. So we need to start that now. And I did not just say it once, I mean it now, now, now. So that's why the sense of urgency comes in in that name as well. And then uh, the role of you know, resilience. We as a generation, we, we are more than just being resilient. We are more than just saying um, we, we want to be part of this story. We are also you know, the story. And I was speaking to someone before this panel, just thinking about, um, actually it was my colleague, um, Betule. We're just talking about all these great African giants who have led liberal movements, who have been you know, the groundbreakers in different um, situations. And I was just asking, so what is our role? You know, what is that one thing that us as young people people bring. We talk about social movements. What is the role of the social movements? And I kept on saying that the ground has been broken for us. Our work is tough. Our work is to make sure that we do not lose that momentum. Our work is um, to ask what next. 
you know, what next? What can we keep doing to ensure that the work that the African giants, um, that they have done for us is not going to be, you know, left in vain? What can we keep on doing? And what can we hand on to the next generation? Because we will not be young forever. We need to keep on looking at how we uh, continue disseminating all that information and all the skills that we have learned as young people as well. And then um, when it comes to the core values and you know, the core values of the African Youth Panel, the, primaries, uh, the primary aspect of it being you know, youth agency. Uh, we keep on speaking about empowering young people and all that. Young people do not really like that word these days about empowerment because the idea it gives is that we are waiting for someone to come and save us. You know, we need to be saving ourselves as well. So we can't just sit here saying we're waiting to be empowered, but we would like that support to continue that empowerment, to continue, you know, um, working for our livelihoods. I'll be leading a lot of work on decent uh, youth and decent and fulfilling work for the young people. But then I just would like to look at it in a different aspect where we are looking at the livelihoods and not just employment. Young people have good ideas, they have initiatives they're leading, and the role that the CSOs and the think tanks can also help us with is to provide us that, those resources, invite us to such spaces, you know, invite us, um, welcome the ideas and help us to be able to refine them and make them an idea that does not just work for the young people but works for the community as a whole. Because we do love our communities and we are also, you know, a part of that uh, growth in the community aspect as well. So I'd just like to invite all of us here to, you know, collaborate with us for the bright future, the present that we are creating right now, to invite all this, you know, innovative, vibrant energy, the dynamism that we have in this continent, and we can do a lot, a lot, a lot of work, and we can do great things as well. So thank you so much.